check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It's time for another crypto update with Framework Fortune Crypto. I'm your host, Ben. Let's dive in. So, God's Unchained, God's Token, just had a nice bounce, finally. After being on a downtrend pretty much since it's come out, the last two days jumping almost 150%. Very strong bounce off of those really low lows where we just had this crypto crash because of UST and Luna. Now we scroll back, gods came out pretty high and it had a lot of potential. I've got Bitcoin here on this line and then Ethereum on this line. But when it came out, that was right at the time that Ethereum and Bitcoin started selling off. And they have continued to sell off since then with Immutable X and Gods Unchained being built on top of Ethereum. Ethereum's price is, of course, going to have a heavy weight on Gods token as well as IMX. But we're starting to see as we're comparing here since the beginning of May gods is actually outperforming bitcoin and ethereum at the moment gods is up 11 percent on the month bitcoin's down 22 percent and ethereum's down 28 percent so with the price of gods actually breaking away from ethereum with this spike then that obviously indicates there's something going on that we should know about, right? Number one, I would say the biggest factor is how cheap that it got from this crash, right? So gods went all the way down to 21 cents. A lot of panic and sell-off. The gods unchained marketplace has seen some price drops as well. But actually, here in the last few days, I've noticed quite a bit of price jumps you can see right there this fox pup is up 1500 percent over the last three days so it's only a dollar right now we click on it look back here on the chart and you can see this big spike where this was five cents may 19th and yesterday they were jumping all the way up to 25 cents there is some action that started coming back into the NFT marketplace, which there really never wasn't any action with the Mortal Judgment set that just released and now Divine Order closing. The way it works really quick with the NFT packs and the sets for Gods Unchained is they leave the set open, meaning they can change the cards for about six months, usually for a balancing phase to make sure that the game stays fair and in that time, you can still trade the card. So different changes, different nerfs and buffs can cause a lot of volatility in prices. So with this set closing, that means that these NFT cards can no longer be changed ever again. So we're seeing some action coming in to that set, the Divine Order set. But we also have staking right around the corner. And part of that staking is going to be active staking. You're going to be able to vote on proposals every week of how the game and how the project should move forward along with getting probably some interesting APRs. And with IMX staking, I would think that you'll probably be subject to airdrops being an IMX holder from new NFTs that come on the platform. So... That's one reason why I'm surprised to see IMX lower than God's at the moment. And I do think IMX is not going to stay under a dollar for very long. Now, Ethereum and Bitcoin, could they continue to go down and drag the prices of God's and IMX and other cryptos down? It is a possibility, but so far, after this last little crash, Bitcoin's actually held sideways for over two weeks right around this thirty thousand dollar support area which i was saying before if it did crack thirty five thousand up here we could see it drop down to thirty thousand because that was previous support back through here on this bottom and this bottom the ust crash this was of course over hype so it got overextended but we see that support still holding up and in fact continues Bitcoin could start pushing right back up. And we got to keep in mind, after this last crash, that put Bitcoin down 50% on the year. So 50% crash on Bitcoin first half of this year. And we're seeing buyers already starting to pick it up at that support level. This may be the new bottom. We'll see. This is what I thought was going to be the new bottom. 
if we did come back down, and this would be good confirmation as it would be the third time that Bitcoin has tested this support area. We are quite a ways though at the moment off of this 200 day moving average. And if you look at the previous history of Bitcoin, it does not like to stay very far away from that 200 moving average on this rip here went all the way up to 65 and then immediately when we dumped yanked back all the way down to that 30 area before getting yanked back up towards the 200 again so anytime you see those types of erratic price sell-offs usually you see some type of push back up to that 200 day so that's what i'm kind of expecting if it's 30,000 to 28,000 area is able to hold. Ether, same thing, which Ether from the beginning of the year is being down about 37 to 40%. It was down 60 70% on this big drop we just had. But again, looking at that 200 day moving average and looking at the overall time frame of Ethereum, it usually likes to rubber band back towards it. We do have a nice line of support right across 1750 which is also about the fifth time Ethereum's tested that level and the fourth time that it's tested 2000. We are currently back over 2000. More than likely, I think we're going to see some more push up on Ethereum and Bitcoin, which should add to God's token moving back up. I think when staking is launched, it may not be this month. We may be looking at June, possibly July, but I'm leaning towards early to mid June on the staking from what I've seen from the Immutable X and Gods Unchained teams. So there is reason for buying to come back in on IMX and Gods token. Now the Cosmos ecosystem, one of the hardest to get hit in this last in this UST crash because of Luna being built in the Cosmos ecosystem as a blockchain are all separate blockchains so really it should have not have had this big of an effect. Adam has already rebounded from that eight dollar area been pushing up currently holding around 1150. So it's got a little uptrend that started over the past 10 days and actually looking kind of bullish here as we have an bullish engulfing candle today if it can close like this above this previous day's red candle, basically the tops of those candles at 11.21. We're seeing that rebound on Adam and Juno really having a nice rebound, bouncing all the way back up to 7.19. Osmo is still pretty low, but does have that same uptrend, of course, following Adam. But we have these new pools on Osmosis that I've been talking about since the Luna UST crash that have come in place very quickly from the community of Osmo stakers voting on proposals. But we have the wrapped Ethereum Osmo pool on here, and you can gain 218% yearly on 14 days on bonding. But hit that like button if you like the sound of 218% APRs. This is not the only pools that's been added recently. We do have the USDC Osmo and DAI Osmo pools in place of the UST pools. And you can see those pool liquidities are low right now, gaining 193% on DAI and Osmo, 173% on USDC Osmo. Oh, and actually the Rat Bitcoin one is live. I was waiting to see this one. It just popped up, I think, either in the last day here. Uh, but you can see 14-day unbonding period right now. APR is 452%. So real quick, what these bonding periods mean is if you bond it for a day it only takes a day to remove the liquidity out of there so you can send it to another wallet or cash out whatever you're trying to do do seven days you're going to get a higher apr but you'll have to take seven days before you can actually move those coins 14 days same thing it's just a longer time period before you can withdraw it so because you're taking a little bit more risk you get a higher apr and what is the risk of liquidity pools real quick and this is not just with cosmos this is with any liquidity pools in any ecosystems any blockchains your risk is in permanent loss and permanent loss would be basically one of the coins just crashes out like luna or ust then all you have left is the value of that other coin of course people are going to be draining those liquidity pools fast if you're looking for less risky you know a day is not too bad you can get in and out of that pretty quick 
But if you want the highest APRs, then the 14-day unbonding period is what you got to go with. But yeah, 452% at the moment on Rap Bitcoin Osmo pool. So a lot of action going on on Osmosis and in the Cosmos ecosystem after that crash. This is a coin I really don't cover, but there's Chihuahua, the meme coin of the Cosmos ecosystem. In my opinion, a lot cuter than Dogecoin or Shiba Inu, but hey, <laughs> who's judging? Anyway, today we have a nice spike on REP. I'm not familiar with this coin or token, but it was all the way down at 571 for that crash. Today going from $7 up to 1217, currently over 1084. Let's scroll this back and see what this has been doing. So I have looked at this before because there's a downtrend, but we do have a lot of support right at that area for REP. Possibly a big wedge pattern forming, but that would be more likely to break in July. It's just getting a rubber band back up to that 200 day moving average. Could be something with the project, like I said, I'm not that familiar. Uh, Mirror protocol, this is up 16% on the day, on the day, a little spike up. Uh, Storm X up 12%. So seeing a little bit of rebound throughout this whole weekend on most of the coins. Yeah, scrolling through here, a bunch of green right now today. But the main thing to keep an eye on is Bitcoin and Ethereum if they're holding those support levels. I do want to point out that BTCS NASDAQ listed node validator has added Axie Infinity to their node validation. Their biggest holdings right now is Ethereum. And this is their first holding that is actually in the nft gaming space so that's pretty cool and if you haven't caught any of the videos yet with the ceo of btcs charles allen those links will be in the description there's actually going to be about four videos all together uh, once they're all finally released so i had an interesting brave ad pop up if you're using brave Got those ads on earning that basic attention token. Join crowdhealth.com, decentralize your healthcare. So as I've been saying, blockchain is going to disrupt every single sector. It is going to. And decentralization, individuals being able to have ownership over their data. Healthcare is a big, big data collection Think about it, anytime you go into a doctor's visit, emergency room, you gotta fill out paperwork and they've already got a ton of your data as they have your medical entire history. And you know, they could easily just sell that to whoever they want, like Google and other places do. So we're starting to see some more sectors getting infiltrated by decentralization. I'm happy to see it. So this is Bitcoin and crowdfunding together. And you pay a monthly contribution in dollars into your health funding account. This is a custodial account held by a well-respected Bitcoin custodian. custodian. So eh, I don't like the sound of that. I haven't looked into this that much yet. I like to hold my own coins. But let's continue on. Step two, for the first four months, 100% of the dollars will be held in fiat. Thereafter, 70% of the dollars are converted to Bitcoin and 25% is held in fiat. We are asking you to hold some in fiat to keep from having to sell Bitcoin in the event of, the large, of a large funding request. That makes sense. Keep a little fiat just in case, you know, prices of Bitcoin might drop or whatever and you got to pay for a bill. So that's all right. Step three, if someone in the community has a health event, broken arm, knee replacement, they pay the first 500 out of their personal bank account. I don't know about that. Step four, the balance is then crowdfunded from the rest of the community using the fiat that they put in their health funding account. Bitcoiners crowd will crowdfund each other's health events once the community hits a thousand members. In the event that you contribute all your fiat to help with others, their health events will, we will give you the option of selling your existing Bitcoin or contributing. So yeah, if you, if you, <laughs> so I'm not sure about that either. Step six, why would anyone give out their account? The incentive to give is that each member has a reputation score, which reflects how often they give when they are asked. If in aggregate they are asked for $1,000 and gave only 500, they have a reputation score of 50. This score is revealed when we crowdfund for their health events. The lower the reputation score, the lower the probability that others will agree to fund your event. 
we will never ask you for more money than is than what is in your health funding account. Well, that's good that they're not going to ask. But this is an interesting model here, a community model. Step seven, if you leave Crowd Health, you take whatever Bitcoin is left in your health funding account with you minus a $250 closing fee. So if you try to get out of this, you're going <laughs> to... You're going to be hit with a $250 fee. I don't know about that either. Let's see here. Looks like you got ages 0 to 5 for $225 a month, but you got families. I'm not sure what 0 to 5-year-old is getting their own insurance, but families 4 to 8, $700 per month. That's about really on par with everything else, so I don't know how much cheaper it is. Let's scroll down a little bit more and make sure. Yeah, so I actually he does have videos on YouTube. The economics of healthcare. They do have Facebook and Instagram. And Andy Schoonover, if you hear this and you want to come on the channel and tell us about it and give us some more details and let me ask some questions about your crowd health project. Very interesting, and I would love to have you on. But anyway, that's it for today's crypto update. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.